Welcome ladies and gentlemen to day four of our Disney Cruise Line vacation on board the Disney Dream. Today we have a beautiful day at sea where we start the day off right with an amazing brunch at Palo. Throughout the day we challenge ourselves with multiple rounds of trivia, have an amazing dinner at Animator's Palette, and end the night off with some more hilarious adult entertainment. We have all that in today's video and so much more up next. <laughs> Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome to day 4 of our Disney Cruise Line vacation with Marvel Day at Sea on board the Disney Dream. Today we have our second day at sea and we're starting things off strong with a Palo brunch. I'm super excited to head on up there and experience it once again and of course we have plenty of fun activities planned for today while we are at sea. It's going to be a very fun, very exciting day guys so I hope you guys are ready. Let's get this day started. By the way guys, if you're in your cabin and you have a veranda and you're hearing a ghost noise, like you're about to get visited by the three ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future, uh, your door is just like unlocked. You gotta tighten it and that gets rid of the majority of the noise depending on how windy it is outside and how fast you're going. Well, we were gonna try and get some nice photos outside with the, uh, with the funnel. You know, in our heads we had a nice gentle breeze like we've had on most cruises, but um, no, this ain't the case. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna try again tomorrow when we're docked at Castaway Key in the morning because this ain't it. <laughs> so one thing that always confused me is that Palo is on deck 12 aft, but there's no way to get to Palo from the outside deck on deck 12, if that makes any sense. Like you're forced to go down to at least 11, go through cabanas, and then go up the stairs to the elevator. That's so weird to me. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Good to see you again. <laughs> All right, we have made it back to Paolo for brunch. Let's go ahead and take a look at the menu. Over here at the top, we have our antipasti selection. You can pick one or the other, or both if you so desire. Uh, the price for Paolo brunch is $50, and you can order anything on the menu that you want, as much as you want. You can make it worth your while here at Paolo brunch. This is the best bang for your buck on the cruise. We have our egg section, waffles and pancakes. We have soups, we have pizzas and we have our entrees down here and of course we have a separate menu for dessert that we will get into when we get there. So this Palo Brunch is going to be just a little bit different from what you guys are used to seeing on the channel. Now while Palo Brunch is $50 and you can get whatever you want on the menu as much as you want, I'm very much so used to you know getting whatever I wanted and eating myself to death at Palo Brunch, you know, to make it worth the money and also the food is just so good, but because of my injections and my new diet, I have to really pick and choose what I really want to eat because I get full rather quickly. So Code and I, we're both going to get a few things and we're also going to be sharing a few things as well. So we're not going to be eating nearly as much as we normally do here at Palo Brunch, but we're still going to show you everything that we get. And of course to start we have our savory bread basket over here with my favorite focaccia bread with onion. It is so delicious. I highly recommend it. And he offered us some danishes as well. I opted for the blueberry muffin and Coda got the lemon tart. For an appetizer, Coda ordered the charcuterie board. It's got a bunch of sliced meats and different cheeses. And this right here is a black truffle cheese. Very similar, almost exactly the same to what we had during Palo dinner. One thing I also want to note with Palo brunch as well is that your first alcoholic beverage is included. They do have a selection of different champagnes and mimosas. And I think Coda got a Bellini, am I correct? Mm -hmm. A Bellini and I got the non-alcoholic option which is like an apple cider it's all shimmery and swirly it's got glitter in it it's very pretty first up we have our single salmon eggs Benedict and it has caviar on top on the fantasy it did not come with caviar for whatever reason I am a happy camper and Coda got a regular eggs Benedict with him next up to share we have one of my favorite things on the menu the grape and gorgonzola pizza and I actually shouldn't say it's on the menu it's not on the menu it's actually a secret menu item you have to specifically ask for it it is really good you should definitely give it a try now I only got half because again I can't eat a whole lot so I only really want two slices so I asked if we could just get half and he said no problem and they made it happen and 
And next up to share, we got the blueberry pancakes. This is a favorite for Coda and I, and we each get one. And last but certainly not least, my all-time favorite thing to eat on any Disney Cruise Line ship is the chicken parm over here at Palo. There's no compromises here. Coda and I both got our own. <laughs> It was a valiant effort by both Coda and I, but we are both tapping out because we both want the chocolate lava cake, and I'm definitely not gonna be eating the whole thing, that's for sure. And last but not least, we have the warm amaretto chocolate fondant dessert. It comes with hazelnut gelato. Definitely not gonna finish mine, only having a few bites, but I'm still excited to have it. And here we have our receipt for Paolo brunch, a flat zero. Honestly, the best part about being a plastic Platinum Castaway Club is your free Palo credit. And fun fact, even if one person in your stateroom is a Platinum, every single member of that stateroom gets the uh, discount at Palo. So for both of us, zero dollars, all we need to do is add a tip. <sighs> Another very successful brunch at Palo. Now I am feeling actually really good because normally when we leave Palo, I am eating myself to death and I feel like I am having to roll myself out of there. Now I'm actually feeling pretty good. Like I'm full, but not overly full. And you know, I just had a little bit of, you know, what I, what I had ordered. Like I didn't even finish the chicken parm. I didn't finish the pizza. Like I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm very satisfied. I could have easily, you know, gotten a lot more, but then I would have been overly full. But anyways, we're going to go back to the room now, relax for a little bit, and then we have a bunch of activities that I have highlighted on the app for today. We also need to hide our ducks today. It's going to be a fun day. I also can't get over how freaking gorgeous that dress looks on Koda. She looks beautiful with the heels and everything. <laughs> It's about 12.15 in the afternoon right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on in the atrium. Gorgeous as ever. It looks like we have a little bit of a princess gathering. I don't necessarily think this is a royal gathering. We have Ariel, Mulan, Belle, and Cinderella over here. And right across the way, we have Rapunzel. That's awesome. And in the vestibule right there, not the vestibule, what is that? I actually think that's the vestibule. Anyways, Stitch is over there. He's meeting guests too. All right, this is something that I've been looking forward to. We're heading on over into the district, more specifically Pub 687, so we can partake in some adult-only Star Wars trivia. And in parentheses, it says advanced. Very curious to see how well I do with this. So we made it inside hey. Club 687. I'm actually here with future father-in-law, Coda's dad. We're gonna be tackling this uh, Star Wars trivia, just us two, so. Fingers crossed we actually do good. I like to think I'm pretty knowledgeable. Nugget's here too. So we'll see what happens. What is the name of General Grievous's flagship? <laughs> oh no. When translated from Arabesh, what is the what is written on DJ's hat in The Last Jedi? Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Question three. This is finish the quote. Why you stuck up half-witted blank. So finish this sentence. Finish this line from DJ to Finn. Again, DJ. It's all a machine, partner. Live free, blank. <laughs> and no, it is not die hard. We have a multiple choice question. Aside from Luke Skywalker, who is the only rebel pilot to survive all three films of the original trilogy? You have four options. Wedge and Tilly's. Biggs Darklighter, Jack Porkins, Dak Walter. What is Grand Moff Tarkin's first name? Question 
Question six, what is Grand Moff Tarkin's first name? Question seven is, what is the agreement call of the battle droids? What is Emperor Palpatine's first name? Again with the first names here. What is Emperor Palpatine's first name? I know it might be a little difficult to see, but off the port side of the ship, we do have a celebrity ship who is sailing in the opposite direction, possibly making their way over to Cozumel for tomorrow. After a very hard and disappointing loss, we are making our way over into the D Lounge to try at a little redemption in Disney Toons trivia. Well, Coda was supposed to be here to help me out with uh, Disney Toons trivia live, but she's still in the room napping. I told her to set an alarm for 1.30, or not even 1.30, for like 1.10, so she would be down here. She hasn't texted me, she's not responding to my texts. I think I'm in this one alone, guys. Oh boy. Let's go with the first one. Here we go. Unfortunately, we were unsuccessful at Disney Toons Trivia. I did have Coda's dad make an appearance next to me, so I did have a little bit of help from him. My final score was 27 out of 40. The winning score was 38 out of 40, so holy cow. <laughs> Some of those were actually pretty difficult, and I'm actually surprised I got a few of those. But anyways, it was a lot of fun. Now I'm going to go back up to the room, and I'm going to wake up Coda and give her peace of my mind. She should have been there to help me. She told me she was going to be there to help me. Poor girl's probably really, really tired, which, I mean, to be fair, I am too, but we're on a cruise. We can nap, just not forever, so I'm going to go wake her up. <laughs> well, look who's awake. I walked in the room, and she's finally up. Yeah. How was your nap? Did you sleep well at least? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm glad. Thankfully, your dad was there to help me out with a couple of questions. Shawnee showed up too. Yeah. Still didn't win, but... Would you have won with me? I would have definitely gotten a few of the answers right because I knew the name of the song. I just wrote down the completely wrong thing. Like <laughs> like for, um, for the Mulan song, Let's Get Down to Business. Like the song is called Be a Man. But I wrote down, let's get down to business. See, stuff like that, you would have caught and you would have corrected me. So we could have won, but not really. The winning score was uh, 38 out of 40, and I was 27, so. But either way, I'm glad you're up. Which glass slipper did Cinderella leave behind at the ball? What foot was it on, the left or the right? Which Disney classic was released first, Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty? What is the name of Mulan's dog? What enchanted object forced Princess Aurora into her sleep on her 16th birthday? What was the name of the object that was cursed? In the movie, The Parent Trap, where did the twins first meet? Which animated feature begins with a quote, Money can buy most things, but it can't buy the wag of a dog's tail. Who performed the song, Can You Feel the Love Tonight, from The Lion King? Third trivia of the day, and unfortunately we are still unsuccessful. It's going to be a minute before we get another medallion. I think the last time we actually won a trivia was on The Wish, which was last year when we had Coda's parents on The Wish. So, um... We'll see what happens with our next trivia, which is at 4 o'clock, which is Ultimate Disney Trivia, which is also 18 plus, so we shall see. So one of the more entertaining things that Coda and I love to do when we're out on the balcony is we like to look for flying fish. Now, it's very common when you're sailing like out in the Gulf of Mexico. I, I haven't noticed them too much in the Bahamas, but when you're in the Gulf of Mexico, when you're cutting through the water, if you're in the front half of the ship, look down in the water and you can see flying fish. They jump through the water and they glide. Oh yeah, there he is. They jump out of the water and they glide along the surface. And there are these birds that sail alongside of the ship almost the entire day and they're exclusively hunting those flying fish. 
and Coda and I just love to sit out here and watch the flying fish jump out of the water and just do their thing. And we're always rooting for the fish because we always see the birds, you know, they, they see the fish as they jump out of the water and they go and they dive bomb for them. It's just very entertaining. If you've never seen a flying fish before, it's very hard to describe like what you need to look for. But when you're out here, every once in a while, you'll see something shiny jump out of the water and it'll just kind of glide along the surface. Sometimes it catches the sun's rays and it's very entertaining to see. Another good place to look for them if you're not on your balcony is deck four, the promenade deck. You're kind of lower to the water towards the front of the ship. It's definitely a very entertaining thing to do and I highly recommend you keep an eye out for them. So it is time to head on down to Animator's Palette for Nemo night, Coda's favorite night. But first, on the way there, we need to hide this duck. It's not gonna focus because there are too many people here, but we're hiding this duck, there you go. We have made it to Animator's Palette. Let's go ahead and take a look at the menu. Starting off, we have our specialty cocktails up top. For appetizers, we have a smoked salmon tartare, a sliced serrano ham, black truffle pasta per sets. Of course, you know we're gonna get that, and a tomato tart. For our soups and salads, we have a creamy butternut squash soup, a baked potato and cheddar cheese soup, arugula leaves, and a chicken and walnut salad. I do believe I'm gonna try that today. For our bread service, we have a garlic and herb focaccia. For our main courses, we have a panette bolognese, a grilled tuna steak, a thyme marinated all natural chicken breast, an herb crusted pork chop, and a ginger teriyaki dusted anga beef tenderloin. And here are your vegetarian and lighter note offerings. First things first, diet be damned, we are getting the black truffle pasta. Only one order though. For our salad course, we have the chicken and walnut salad with dried cranberries, red onions, and a cranberry dressing. This is my first time trying this salad, so I'm very interested to see how good it is. Just a real quick review of the walnut salad, only because I've never had it before. It was actually really tasty, probably my favorite salad that I've had the entire trip. If you're looking to eat a little bit healthier on the cruise, that's definitely a salad I would go for. It did have a few undeclared ingredients, like there was celery in there, and there was also some apples, but other than that, it was really tasty. I enjoyed it. And per usual for me here at Animator's Palette, I got the herb crusted pork chop, a roasted pork chop brushed with Dijon mustard and crusted with herb breadcrumbs served with sun-dried tomato risotto and Borlo wine sauce. And now that we have our dessert menu, let's go ahead and take a look at the options. We have a crunchy walnut cake, a chocolate fudge cheesecake, a cookies and cream sundae, an apple crumble rice pudding. For our signatures, a lemon icebox pie, and for no sugar added, we have a deconstructed carrot cake. And finally, for dessert, I got the cookies and cream sundae. All right, what's the towel animal? I'll go with the dog. Dog? I'm gonna say dinosaur. Okay. Okay, let's see what it is. Uh, it's a snake! <laughs> would not have gotten Why did it have to be snakes? I have never seen this one before. <laughs> this is a new one. I love it. Oh my god. That is too cool. This is not. We can just. Yeah. But this is so cool. I love this. Just made it back from dinner. I have a tiny little rant for you guys. Don't be these people. Your dinner time is 5.45 acceptable late arrival is six o'clock at like the latest in order to have a decent service and to not really be a nuisance on the waiters. Don't show up to the dining room at 6.30, 6.45, 
or later expecting to get served in a timely manner and just don't do that to your servers. There were two families near us that showed up at 6.30 and 6.45, an hour after they were supposed to be there. And I could see the servers. Like, they put on a smile for the families, you know, as they were coming in. They can't say no. They're not going to deny them. But, you know, I can hear them and I can see them at their little workstation. And they are stressed. They are in disbelief that the families are showing up this late. It throws a wrench in their whole system because they plan on families being there at a certain time. They plan and, and accommodate for, you know, maybe 15 minutes late. But when you're showing up that late, it hinders them a lot and it hurts them a lot. It not only hurts your service, but it hurts other people's service as well. If you don't show up after a certain time, they're counting you out. They're counting you out. So, I mean, I I have so much respect for the wait staff on these Disney cruise ships. They put up with so much. And, you know, back in the day, they, there used to be so many more of them. So many more of them. And unfortunately, you know, to cut costs, they've reduced the number of staff. So they're having to take on more tables. And it's just rough for them. So just please don't be those people. Because you're you're really hurting the wait staff there by, by you being that late. Okay, rant over. <laughs> we're going to go downstairs now, and we're going to go enjoy Beauty and the Beast, which is my favorite of all the Disney Cruise Line shows. I'm super excited. By the way, guys, something I forgot to mention is that I did bring my medication on the cruise with me. I am taking Wigovi, which is the 2.4 milligrams. <laughs> this is the injection that I just take on the side of my thigh. And um, I kept it in the fridge this whole time. You are able to bring stuff like this on board, even though it does have a needle. Um, it does count as a medication. So, yeah, we just got back from dinner. I stabbed myself in the side. Stings a little bit, but it, but it's honestly not that bad. And, um, yeah, this is what I've been using for my uh, weight loss medication. That's what's helped me lose over 30 pounds in three months. Heading on in to the Walt Disney Theater. <laughs> So I know I said this when we were on the Fantasy just before we watched Frozen. Beauty and the Beast is the same way. This is one of the more popular shows that are going to be shown on your cruise. If you want to see this show and you want a good spot, make sure you get here early. We were here at like 7.45ish and there was already a line to get into the theater. So just be aware of that. Like the doors opened at 8, a little after 8 and all the seats around us filled up quickly. This is not a show that you want to miss. This is a show that your kids aren't going to want to miss. So just make sure you get here early. friend it is time for you to find a new home bye 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 well, thank you so much for coming there where are you from tampa tampa, tampa. tampa. what's it called tampa scotch tracks i'm sorry tampa <laughs> there we are brilliant i don't know where that is but thank you for coming all the way your first question is this what is my co-host's name? <laughs> on the count of three, I'm going to flip it to show the audience. And if it's all correct, you're going to go, yay! And if it's not correct, you're going to go, oh, just like that. All right, couple number one, my lovers. 
We're going to show each other in three, two, one. Show the audience. Miranda. Uh, Not correct. <laughs> really? Why did you put? We have Mariana and Miranda. Miranda. There is a Miranda in the room, but it's not my co-host. Did I get it right? <laughs> you did get it right. Good job. That is not a point. <laughs> All right, my siblings, reveal your answer in three, two, one. Show me your answer. Why are you laughing? <laughs> turn it, turn it. So I got the it right. The thing they call Paolo and I call Mariana. <laughs> I think great, Tony Madden. I think great, Mariana. Yeah. <laughs> Name something you turn off the lights to do. Name something you turn off the lights to do. All right, I'm going to come out there and ask someone in the audience what you would do with the lights turned off. Here I come. <laughs> My lovelies. Hey. You thought you were safe at the back of the room, didn't you? What is something you would do with the lights turned off? Sleep! Sleep! Interesting. Alrighty. Would we all agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're a little weird if you stick the lights on, right? Yeah, red flag. Alrighty. Hands down, my contestants. Alright, my siblings. Reveal your answer in three, two, one. Sleep! So that is 1.2 points to you. Discover the magic. <laughs> <laughs> I like the magic phrase, but I don't Discover the magic. I'm so sorry. Look the other way. Look the other way. All right, your next question is, I felt grown up the first time I paid taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Got a job. Hey, that's a good one as well, but it isn't not a match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Paid taxes and got a job. Something Peter Pan will never do. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm bored, I play with my. <laughs> I actually put my weight shaker. <laughs> Shake weight. Has anyone seen one of them before? <laughs> you can hold it with both hands, you shake it. Okay. Oh, Alright, and my siblings, what did you put? Pets. Oh. You didn't put anything? Boyfriend? Oh my goodness, this got a real 18 plus. What are you playing with when you're bored? Thank you for your honesty. So, how was that? Oh, you wrote a 10. <laughs> <laughs> like, but you won! Yeah, you have chance. Did you expect to win? No. No? Did you Not expect to win? No. <laughs> so what are the odds? All three of us are leaving this cruise with a fancy bag. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I participated yesterday in one, and you participated today in one. Yay. That's awesome. So yeah, Coda is working on another crochet duck. In the middle of the show, she finished that one. This one she finished earlier today. She's busting these out, and we are hiding them throughout the ship for people to find. And we've actually had people come up to us and ask us, when are we hiding our crochet ducks? Because they're looking for these specifically. And we've been telling them, the sea day. We're, we're hiding them on the sea day and, you know, now, tomorrow. So, yeah, people love these ducks, and Coda's so happy to make them. There's karaoke going on in the D-Lounge, and Miss Marvel's in here. And Coda says Shang-Chi's in there somewhere, too? He's next to Miss Marvel. Is he really? Oh, yeah, Shang-Chi's in there, too. <laughs> That is so cool. How random is that? <laughs> and 
on that very random note, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to end day four here on the Disney Dream for our Five Night Marvel Day at Sea vacation. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. Sea days are always so fun, so exciting, so relaxing because you never know where the day is going to take you. You will have a plan set and then you could just deviate from that and not accomplish anything. You could just stay in a nap. The world is your oyster when it comes to a sea day and that is why I love them so much. If you enjoyed any bit of today's video, please help us out by leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. We just hit 50,000 subscribers. We're on the road to 100K and we would love to have you be a part of this journey. If you made it this far into the video, please help us out by leaving the word duck down in the comment section below. Let me know that you guys are the real MVPs. I hope you're all having a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, evening, and I'll see you guys in the next video.